Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, good afternoon. So, I actually f uh, first learned of Olivier's work because of his uh, fantastic uh, new proof of the uh, theorem of uh, Rayleigh that he'll tell us about. Uh, and then he will go on to tell us about his main interest on planar maps. Please, Olivier Bernard. Thanks a lot. So, thanks a lot for this invitation. Um, so yes, you will have uh, two talks for the price of one because uh, I think you, so some of you were interested in the short proof of Rayleigh's theorem, but as claimed is short. So uh, it shouldn't uh, take the full uh, one hour. So then after that, I'll, I'll present another topic which is about bijections on maps. Okay, so uh, let's discuss the, the, the works first. So uh, that's a result about works in the plane. So more precisely, you, you look at a work which is made of uh, n unit steps. And uh, at, at each step, you choose a direction uh, uniformly at random. And the, the, the result, there is a very nice result about it, which is if you look at the probability for this work to end a distance less than one from the origin, so that means uh, ending in the, in the disk here, uh, this probability is exactly one over n plus one. Okay, and uh, so, so the goal is, is to prove uh, this, this result in an elementary way. And the, the extension comes with, uh, this proof with, comes with two extensions. So, uh, First of all, instead of looking at just one walk, I'll be looking at two walks. So let's, let's say that one of the walk has i step and the other was j steps. Then uh, the claim is that the probability that the one with i step uh, will go further is i over i plus j. So if you take i equal to one, that's the previous previous result. So in the previous result, you can think that you were comparing with just one step. And the, the other extension here is that there is this x. So here, th this means that now instead of doing unit steps, um, each of the step is chosen with a random length uh, distributed as a random variable x. So, okay, so all the steps are uh, independence, and uh, so this is the probability that you get. So, um, all right. So, but, but you have to still have the rotation in the, the direction. Isn't That's it? right. So at at each step, uh, still the the direction is is chosen uniformly at random, independently for each step. Okay. So that's the result. So um, it's all based. The proof is all based on a simple lemma. So you take uh, three random variables a, b, c, and you compare, <coughs> uh, say for instance, you compare uh, the value of a with the distance produced by uh, um, a walk of two steps, b, then c. Okay. The, the direction is chosen uniformly at random. And th so the claim is that uh, if, you, if you do the symmetric, so you, you sum the symmetric uh, uh, probabilities, and this is su the sum is one. Okay, so why is that true? So, all right, so let's uh, first start by conditioning uh, on the value of a, b, c. So let's say little a, little b, and little c for the length. And there are two cases. So we want to prove this, this equality. And there are two cases. Well, either um, these, these numbers A, B, C satisfy the triangular inequalities or not. If they don't satisfy the 
triangular inequalities, uh, say for instance A is greater than B plus C, then uh, this probability is 1 and the other are 0. So sum is clearly 1 in these cases. So now uh, the other case is when it satisfies the triangular inequalities and then you can consider the triangle here with lengths A, B, C. And uh, okay, say alpha, beta, gamma for the angles. And uh, okay, so let's let's look at this probability. Probability that A is greater than B C. So the probability is taken on 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 this angle here. And okay, so for 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 this event to happen, what you need is this angle theta to be less than a alpha in absolute value, right? If if you take a smaller angle than alpha, then B C make shorter than A. And otherwise it, take, it makes more than A. Right, so that's, that's this quality here. Well, and then if you sum over the different pos the, the symmetric probability, you will end up summing the angle. And uh, for a triangle, that's pi. So the, the total probability is, is one. Okay, so that's the very simple lemma. And uh, well, uh, that's basically a key. So, uh, well, you can write this equality in this in this form. So, probability that A is greater than B C plus probability that B is greater than A C is this probability A B greater than C. So there is a kind of linearity, you see, in 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 this in this uh, in this operation. So let's, let's uh, apply it to our problem. So denote by PIN uh, the probability that XI, so I steps, is greater than N minus 1 I steps. And what we want to prove is uh, that this PIN is I over N. So we really want to prove a linearity property. Um, OK, so let's see. You, you just apply the lemma to um, A equal to xi, b equals to xj, c equal to n minus i minus j. And this lemma then, this equality here gives pin plus pjn is pi plus jn. So this linearity appears very clearly here. Um, and uh, okay, so this means that you can, you can sum these things. So if you take times ta n times p1n, that's equal to PNN, which is 1. So P1N is 1 over N. That's really the result. And PIN is I, this number, so it's I over N. So, okay, so this lemma really proved that there is a linearity in, in these in this probabilities, and everything uh, just follows from that. So, okay, so that's uh, an elementary proof. I don't know if you have any question on, on this. So, uh, one more comment is that, um, okay, so the original proof uh, by, by Rayleigh was, temps, was using uh, identities on, on Bessel functions, but there is a, a nicer proof by uh, Kenyon and Winkler. Um, which they obtained this, this, uh, their proof as a consequence of a result on um, branch polymers. And, uh, well, this proof is, is very much inspired by their, their result because their result really uh, used crucially the fact that the angle of an of a n-gon is fixed. So, that's, that's where these ideas um, came from. So, I don't know, do you, is there any questions? Or? All right, so <coughs> we can now go to, to, the, to the second part of, of this talk. So this is a, a result about um, Planar maps. 
It is, a, it is a joint work with Eric Fusé, which is my very good collaborator uh, in Paris. So the idea is to, to generalize a bit what is known about the bijections for maps. OK, so for, first, uh, I should recall what are these objects. So planar map, that's a connected planar graph embedded in the sphere and uh, considered up to deformation. So up to deformation means that these two maps are the same. We are really only interested in the, in the combinatorial structure. But you still have more than the graph. OK, so um, there are uh, several motivations for studying planar maps. Uh, two, mainly two types. So you have algorithmic motivations because <coughs> the, the maps are the structure that underlie the meshes of surfaces. And you have uh, motivations coming from probability and physics because uh, maps allow to define uh, some random lattices and random surfaces. And uh, there are several methods for studying um, maps. Um, so either you can do some recur recursive approach or you can uh, use the, um, the connection between maps and Feynman diagrams. Or you can also study maps uh, more algebraically in terms of uh, factorizations in the symmetric group. But I will be uh, focusing on on these uh, types of uh, method, which are bijections between maps and trees. Is it, isn't it Jackson, David Jackson? No, it's uh, uh, what uh, the, I don't think it's David. Uh, it's Jackson in Waterloo University. Oh, OK, maybe I don't remember his, his first name. That's possible. That's what I mean, the one in water. Yes, yes, that's, that's it. We used to be in water. Yeah, sorry. So, um, okay, so the bijections, they, they, they have been uh, developed mainly in the last 10 years after the work of Schaeffer. And they, are, they, they, they draw correspondence between maps and certain uh, plane trees. So, uh, let me give you a, a few examples of uh, counting results. So these are different uh, families of maps. And the number of maps in each family, um, number of, of maps of size n in each family. So um, for instance, you might be interested in triangulations. So that means uh, maps in which <coughs> Uh, the faces have degree 3, so what, this is one example. Or you could be interested in um, quadrangulations, that's maps in which the faces have degree 4. So that's one example. And you see, you can put several uh, types of constraints on this, on this uh, object and uh, still obtain very nice formulas. That's almost like formulas for trees. So it's in indicative that there should be some connection with trees somehow. And uh, also they have algebraic generating functions and they, they behave nicely. Uh, okay, so in fact... Do you allow vertices of degree one? Sorry? Do you allow vertices of degree one? Yes. So, I, so, so that if I put an edge into a triangle inside, what phase do I get? Uh, so, oh yes, so the degree... Yeah, so the degree is... No, 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 <coughs> the face. Sorry? Sorry, continue. So, so... If you count for the face. Yes, yeah, so the degree of this face would be 5. Oh, this, this, this edge is counted twice. So you could think as number of corners. So that's the, the, the good notion with respect to duality. <coughs> if you do realize you want to... to OK, so that's, um, uh, that's several formulas. And uh, all these formulas, they have, uh, a they have some bijections to exp explain them. So in fact, uh, as you see, you have often even two bijections. 
And uh, there are some colors in these uh, bijections between, somehow you can classify these bijections in two types. Uh, okay, so that's, that was the original motivation of this work. So when we started doing this problem with Eric, we wanted to write a review for bijections on maps. And we started to try to classify the, the bijections. And uh, OK, so in fact, what we realized is that we could do more than that. We could really uh, find a common generalizations uh, for the different categories. So uh, the goal here is to uh, describe a master bijections that would generalize all the bijections of the red type. And uh, by doing that, you can. Uh, of course, simplifies and unifies the, the existing proofs, but also you, you in fact find a lot of new bijection. I mean, you can, you can handle much more, m much, many new classes of maps. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the goal of this presentation to, uh, to show that. So um, on this diagram, um, <coughs> I have put the different classes that I have indicated before, and they can be expressed in terms of the degree of the faces and the condition of girth. Um, so girth means that uh, the girth is the minimum length of the cycles in the, in the map. So uh, we had si five uh, results which correspond to this one, this, and this. So um, what we'll cover is all, all the possible things that you can define in terms of degree and gap. Um, OK, and uh, the, the strategy for that is uh, to, to, to describe a master bijection. So the master bijection is not on maps, it's on oriented maps. So we'll map some, uh, so we'll take some oriented map and associate some kind of trees to it. And then you want to specialize it to different classes of maps. So you need to orient the maps canonically somehow. And uh, that's what I will try to explain. Uh, OK, so let's start with the, the bijection, the master bijection. So OK, so uh, I will be looking at uh, plane orientations. I mean, I, I'm, I'm drawing the the map in the plane, so there is an infinite phase. And uh, I'm looking at an oriented map. And I consider the set of, of such objects that uh, are minimal. So this means that there is no counterclockwise directed cycle. Uh, so here you have a clockwise, clockwise directed cycle, but you never have the contrary. That's, that's what minimal means. And you, you also want the orientation to be accessible. That means that if you take a vertex here, it can be reached from the outside. You can, you can find a, a directed path from the outside to these vertex. And lastly, you have this condition. So it's called minimal. Yes, so it's called minimal because there is a lattice Uh, there, is, there is a lattice of orientations, which is on the set of orientations that have the same in degrees. So fix, fix the in degrees of each, uh, of each vertex. So th there are several orientations with these in degrees, but you can put a lattice structure on that. And uh, for this lattice, I will maybe say a word about it. The minimal element is the one with, without counterclockwise cycle. And the, the maximal element is the one with no cl clockwise directed side. So it's, it's a lattice where the, uh, uh, the order is, is obtained by the transitive closure of reversing cycles. Um, OK, and the last condition for my set is that the external vertices have degree 1, which means that. Uh, the, the external face is directed cycle, and every, every vertex that, every 
sorry, every edge goes toward the interior. I never use this. OK, so that's a, that's a set of orientation, and that's where my, the bijection uh, one, one thing acts. So that picture did that. So you, when you say no counter tokens, you're allowing the outside boundary to be intact? Yes, so I allow cycles. But they have to be clockwise. So the, the boundary will be always be a clockwise cycle. So that belongs to your definition? Yes, it does belong to this to the to, to the set code. Uh, all right. So it's really it, it matters which is the face at infinity. <laughs> yes, so this definition uh, has like you, you have to root like uh, so you have to distinguish a, a face to do that, yes. So that's, that's true. All right, so, uh, OK, on the other side of the bijection, you have some types of trees that we call mobiles. Uh, mobiles are for like the Calder's type of mobiles. That's not for the phones. All right, so uh, that's uh, plane trees where the vertices are black and white, uh, properly colored. And the, there are some extra decorations, which are these little arrows that we call buds, on the black vertices. And uh, the excess of, of, of a mobile is the number of edges minus, minus the number of buds. Um, all right, so let me describe the bijection. So you take an orientation in O, and uh, first you, you invert the outside face. OK, so that's, that's nothing. Then, so for each inside face, so let's look at, for instance, this face. So you place a vertex of the mobile inside the face. And then you look at uh, the edges around your face. So if the edges is clockwise, then you, you draw an edge. So it's clockwise, you draw an edge. This one is not clockwise, so you just draw a bud. And this one is clockwise, you, you draw an edge. You do that for each in, in, in interior face. A very simple uh, local operation. And you, you erase, at the end, you erase your original maps. And uh, OK, so the, the claim is that if you take an orientation in O, it will give you a tree. And uh, the result is, is really that it is a bijection between this set O of oriented map and the set of mobiles with negative excess. And there are a lot of uh, obvious correspondence in this map. So for instance, it is clear that uh, the degree of uh, a face will become the degree of the black vertex of the mobile. <coughs> and uh, so just to remind me, so negative excess means more <coughs> buds than edges, right? That's right. Yes, exactly. And um, yeah, so on, like the in degrees or so is correspond to, to the degree of the wide vertices. So you see that um, here you, you get an edge each time that you add an entering uh, edge of the map. OK, so that's nice. You have a lot of uh, parameters that are preserved by that, that bijection. So you can hope to, to specialize it. Uh, and find something interesting. And so that's, that, that's the, 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 the strategy. So let's say you want to count uh, triangulations. Um, OK, so what you can, you can do is uh, try to find a canonical orientation for each triangulation. That should be an orientation in this set O. Then apply the bijection and try to characterize the, mobi the mobiles that you obtain. OK, so that's a strategy. Uh, not sure it works. But so first of all, uh, there is 
a nice way to define the, uh, an orientation in the set O, which is uh, related to David's question. So, uh, <coughs> so look at a, a, f a map G and a function from the vertices to the integers. And so the, the first thing is that if there is an orientation uh, with this in degree, so in degree alpha of v at each vertex v, then there is a unique minimal one. Remember, minimal means no con counterclockwise cycle. In fact, you can just obtain it by uh, uh, returning cycles until you finish. You will finish. And uh, OK, so that means what this m fact implies that you can define an orientation in this set or just by giving the in degrees of each vertex. That's a, a good way of defining an orientation in O. So for, for instance, you could say, I want the minimal orientation, which has in degree 3 at each vertex, something like that. If there exists one. If there exists one, exactly. So now comes the second fact uh, that says when they, they will exist an orientation. So let's say you, you, you want to know if there is an orientation for this uh, function alpha. And there is a good, there is an easy characterization um, of whether this, this, this uh, orientation will exist, which is the fact that, so first of all, you want to the, the sum of the integrals to be equal to the number of edges. Right? So otherwise, you don't have a chance. And, and, and moreover, you want, if you have a subset of vertices, you, you don't want to have too many induced edges. <coughs> Because if you have too many induced edges, you will make too many integrals, and it will not work. So that's two, that two conditions are completely obvious, but they are sufficient. Um, that's true for every graph. That's true for any graph, yes. So, OK, so you can just try to verify such inequalities. And uh, moreover, uh, you can also uh, look at accessibility in terms of these in degrees. The, the accessibility in the graph are completely determined by the in degrees of the vertices. So what you want is to avoid uh, a cut which is completely saturated in one direction, and you can, you can see that on the in degrees. OK. So uh, the conclusion is that you can characterize an, a notation in O by specifying an alpha that has these properties. And uh, the other thing is that it is nice to characterize the orientation by the in degrees because that's one of the parameters that is preserved by the bijection. Uh, the bijection sends the in degrees to the degree of the wide vertices. It seems a good thing. OK, so now. Uh, I will, in the remaining of this talk, I will try to explain how to, how to use this strategy uh, on different examples. So I'll start with the simple example, which is this uh, simple triangulations. So simple means uh, no loops, no multiple edges. So it's the same as GERF's uh, three. OK, so um, first fact is that the triangulation with n internal vertices as three and internal edges. Uh, this is just a consequence of the incidence relation between faces and edges. So it's that three, three times the number of faces, two times the number of edges, and the earlier relation. So if you combine that, you, you get this result. And so a natural candidate for uh, the integral function alpha is the alpha that gives uh, in degree one for the external vertices, that's what we want, and three for the internal ones. Okay, so does it exist? Um, it exists, so that's a result of, of uh, Schneider, and it is related to the Schneider woods. So you, can, you can construct it with an algorithm. But there is, in fact, a, an easier proof if you just want the existence result. And it's just, you take a, a subset of, of uh, vertices, you see, look at the induced graph, and use the earlier relation and the incidence relation to check that all the relations for alpha are satisfied. 
So it's, it's come um, very easily. And here, uh, the crucial thing is that you need to have GERS 3. Otherwise, this, the, you, you, you would have problems uh, in, the, in this condition star. Okay, so that's uh, the result. So it means that the class of triangulation can be endowed with the canonical orientation, <coughs> the one that is minimal and has in degree three at each vertex. And then you, you just apply the, the master bijection to that and you obtain a set of mobiles. So wh what are the mobiles that you obtain? So first of all, the faces are degree three, so the black vertices will have degree three. Then the, the, the vertices at in degree three, so the white vertices will have degree three. And there is this external face that, which has degree three, so the excess is minus three. And um, so that's the kind of mobiles you get. So you, you, you just get a very explicit expression, uh, description of this, of this mobile. So it's easy to uh, comb them uh, and you obtain um, this formula for the number of triangulations. Um, okay, so you need to, to play a bit with the routings, the different types of routings of maps, but nothing very difficult. All right, so um, let's try to, to see if we do, can uh, extend this strategy uh, to more general maps. So here we look at uh, the other guys on the diagonal. That means the angulations of girls D. So the face is of degree D and the girls is, is D. Okay, so let's, let's see. So uh, the angulation of with this number of D minus two N internal vertices have DN edges. That's the consequence of Euler plus the incidence relation. Okay, so does it give a good candidate? Well, we, we could ask uh, one for external vertices and D over D minus two for the internal one. Well, of course, for D greater than four, um, that does not completely make sense. But if you are at that point uh, and think about it for a while, uh, you will come with this um, idea that maybe you can uh, replace each edge by a series of d minus two edges, and then ask for for d the in degree d at each vertex. Okay, okay so that's a, a natural uh, candidate, and in fact, um, the the result that we've seen for triangulation just extends, meaning that. Uh, this, this graph D, we have uh, this type of, the, okay, the map will have, the deangulation will have this uh, orientation if and only if the girth is D. And uh, this is the same proof. You just use these uh, properties of alpha. And okay, so I, I have not presented the, the version for the master bijection that, that would apply to this case, but it's just a, a simple extension that you can think of it, what happens if you have this, this series of edges. So <clears throat> what happens is that now you, you have a slightly more complicated mobiles. But, uh, so it means that now you, you can have some edges that are going from, black, from white to white edges. And uh, you have some weights that correspond to, to, to these fractional orientations. When you add direct orientation that would go in both directions along edges. But so you can, you can do the master bijection anyway. And uh, you can, if you, if you do it for, the, for this type of orientations, you, you get a, a, a master bijection. So if you apply that to uh, this class of uh, deangulation with uh, girls D, um, so you put this canonical orientation, you apply the master bijection, and you get this set of mobiles that you can characterize. 
So there are conditions uh, on the black vertices, conditions on the white vertices, conditions on the edges. And um, you can, you can uh, characterize it and count them. So what you get as a result is uh, this type of uh, characterization of the, of the generating functions. So the, the generating function of these deangulations is given in this form, where the WIs, WIs are uh, given by a system of algebraic equation. So this, this uh, generating function is algebraic. The, uh, um, I don't know. That's a good question. OK, so um, this is, for instance, the system you get for d equal to 5 pentagonations. All right, so um, in the remaining time, I will explain what, what happens if you don't want to do d angulations, but general maps of degree of girls D. So you want to, you want say for instance for girls 4, you want to have uh, the number of maps with given number of each type of phase. Phase of degree 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So. Okay, so uh, there is slight complication in the proof and so what I will focus on is when the external phase is exactly as degree exactly d. So now, again, you want to find uh, an orientation for these type of maps. But so now it's a, bit more, a little bit more complicated. You have to look at the map plus the quadrangulation. So you, in each phase, you, you draw a star like this. And you put some, some weights for the edges of your map, some weights for the edges of these stars. And you, you still want to characterize, you, you can still characterize the fact that you have girls D in terms of the existence of orientation on this thing. Okay, so you can do that. Basically, the proof is that you, you, you have girls D if you can be uh, trunk completed into a deangulation of, de of girls D. And then you contract what you get, and you get something like that. That's the rough, rough idea. Uh, once you have a canonical orientation for your map, you again apply the, the master bijection. It is characterized by some in degrees con in degree constraints and uh, phase degree constraints. And so it can go through the bijection. I don't give the, the full general version, but <clears throat> you end up with a series of mobiles that, as before, you can give the generating function of maps. So th this time you have one variable for each uh, phase degree. So xd for the number of uh, phases of degree d, xd plus 1 is for the number of phases of degree d plus 1, etc. And you, you have this expression <coughs> for the series in where the WIs are given by a system of equation. So for HD, it gives something quite explicit, um, except here you have uh, something, infinite number of terms, if you have an infinite number of Xi's. So the algebraicity here is only if, if, you, if you stop your sequence at a certain level. Uh, and that's all. So that's all I will present. So a uh, few additional remarks. Um, well, so this remark says basically that you can do everything we know about uh, bijections for um, planar maps without matter doing this strategy. Uh, the only two cases that I have not mentioned today are here some, uh, some, some things that do not exist somehow. It's a uh, triangulation where so you, you don't allow, like this one is, well, I'm not at the right place, but there are some, some condition, more complicated condition on girth, and you can treat, still treat that cases. 
Um, the other thing is that the, the bijection can be extended to higher genus. So there is a version of the master bijection for higher genus. The problem there is that uh, you don't have this minimality property and somehow characterizing the, the maps by, the, by some orientation is, is not that easy. Right? It kind of fails at that, at that level. And the uh, third, third remark is that, so in this content of triangulations or the angulations, I have presented some, some orientations on an, an augmented graph. And in fact, they have nice structure, these orientations. Uh, so in the case of triangulations, I, I mentioned that the orientations are uh, very much related to the Schneider ones. And there is an extension to that of that for HD. So for HD, you can you get some kind of uh, Schneider wood structure structure that is adapted to deangulations. And uh, there are some some applications uh, for drawing graphs. Um, so that's that's it. So uh, in terms of reference, uh, what I've presented is more or less this this article. Um, and uh, this one is the, the extension for uh, non deangulations And uh, well, the, the first part will, will appear very shortly. And there are some, some uh, related articles in the archive. Girls can be D, but there is no face. That's right. Which is D. Right. And but don't you always want to draw it that, that the face that we have a D face outside? That, yeah, that's right. yeah, that's I mean, that's, that's that absolutely not, right. That's what not, that's what I have presented. Uh, so somehow it's that's what we do here. We have this constraint that the external face has to be. So it is a, it's a, I mean, it's a but, genuine but, constraint. It's not not a matter of drawing it. Maybe no. there is no drawing. Right? No, it's it's not. I mean, it's. So it, it works nicely. It works nicely for, for this case where the external face has a uh, degree equal to the girl. But in fact, there is a way out. So we can do it. I, I'm not going to present it. You have to cut your maps in several pieces somehow. Yeah, right. Of course. It's a search and you can get, get, get over there. Yeah. Also, your graphs have multiple edges, I assume. Yes. Can, yes. Loops and multiple edges are a priori uh, allowed, but since we are looking at girls, I mean, we can allow or not. But when it comes to counting, you can easily get rid of multiple edges? Well, so that would mean uh, girls at least three. Huh? Girls at least three means... No, 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 no. not at all, not at all. Okay. Absolutely not. What do you mean? <laughs> I've got two vertices joined by and one edge here, one edge there, and there's a pass of length five right. in the middle. Yes. And there's no the, the girls is still two in this case. So the girls is I'm yeah. sorry, the girls. So if you if you but it, but it, but, it, but it's hard as far as it's going to be a deangulation. So, so so the answer is that we, we can do with without I mean even if you don't assume that there is a face of the greedy, we, we can still I mean, we can we can also deal with the case where all the faces are much larger than the girth. That's we can we can also do it. Yes. So, when using the master projection for the applications, you were focusing on finding a canonical orientation. Yes. Of course, an alternative is if you put count orientations and they were somehow the same for each for each one, and you could divide. Yes, yes, that's, that's correct. So here I have, the technique is always just one orientation. We could uh, imagine that we could have like two to the n for each map of size n, for instance. Uh, 
There is one case where it exists, uh, but where it's not exactly like that. But there is one counting result, uh, which is la like this, where you have two to the n you know, somehow. It's uh, but it's a very different uh, type of bijection, um, which do not enter in this framework. But uh, yes, a priori you could have that. Could you mention it? a bit more detail about this drawing algorithm. What's that about? Uh, so it's a drawing algorithm for for regular graphs. So, okay, so do you know the drawing algorithm for uh, that use Sh Schneider woods? Do you know about Schneider wood at all? Okay, so uh, where should I start? So, um, so yeah, what, yeah. The general idea. What yeah, the general right? idea is, is the following. Let me do it for for triangulations. Um, the general idea is that uh, you don't see it. Okay. So let's see. This one is better. Okay. So. Let me take a three three orientation of this. Um, So the Schneider woods are some spanning trees that will uh, have these orientations and cover every edge of the graph. So there are three of them. So, uh, Do you know the I don't see. Yes, there are some there. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. So. Try the black and the blue. Yes, I'll do that. But I will leave one as it is, so it's okay. Uh, and the black. Okay. The black will do that. Okay. Okay, so uh, what this uh, drawing is representing are three trees, each of them uh, coming from one of the external vertices, and they, they, they cross in a funny way. I mean, there, there is a rule. Um, so now, if you take a vertex inside your triangulation, you can look at the path that goes toward the, the red root, the path that go, well, it should be the other way. So the path that goes from the, the blue one and the path that goes from the black one. <coughs> and you can count the number of faces in each of this region. So you will have uh, F1, F2, and F3 faces with the sum being n, 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 n faces. And it happens that if you, if you place the, the points uh, in a grid with coordinate F1 and F2, Um, you get, so you get a placement of your vertices, and if you draw the lines, it's a non, it's a, it's a straight line planar drawing of the triangulation. Um, we have this, we have a similar kind of argument for drawing, uh, tetra, tet, so four regular graphs. So we are still counting faces on different parts of the graph. We place the vertices according to that, and we get some, some drawings out of that. I, I can show you maybe, I don't know. I can show you, for instance, uh, an example, maybe. Sorry? No, it's, so it's, it's, it's still in two dimensions. So uh, we take, so instead of, so you could think that you have uh, four, but for uh, paths, but so you 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 draw you look at what is below and what is on the side, on the left, and that's that's giving a placement. So yeah, but th th there is a, a drawing algorithm. Yeah. Let's adjourn now.